So I keep getting requests for information on how I build propellers for ultralight indoor models, built up propellers. So we're going to do a very brief, simple explanation of the methods I use for that. First of all, I have a template for my propeller that is the proper outline. Uh, this is um, John Kagan's Eidolon design scaled to 18 and 18 and an eighth inch diameter um, and it's just the blade not the the spar or anything and for my rib stations once I've built this template I have cutouts for my rib stations so once I have wrapped my blade outlines around this uh, around this form I can then inlay each of the ribs and I can actually do this two at a time you'll notice there are two they're kind of loose right now but I tape them in to hold them in place while I'm gluing the ribs in. After I have removed the ribs, or after I've installed the ribs, that is, and am ready to, uh, to put them on the spar, uh, I'll have an outline like this, and I've glued the, the spar to the tip of my blade. Um, I mark the center points of each of the ribs, and of course the, the center point on the tip so that I can get the spar glued onto that, because I'm going to do that freehand. Um, I use CA glue. I know that's probably not the lightest method, but it, it gives me reasonable weight propellers. So once you've got your, your blade at this point, it doesn't, this one actually is, is warped slightly. Um, it doesn't matter if it's warped, because you're going to force it into a curve, and you're going to actually dry form it into the, into the helical twist by using tension on the propeller spar. So I use a, I think I built this back in 2012, this is a 28 inch pitch uh, block, and I use this for, for most of my uh, F1D propellers. Um, and I've got several stations here. These do not have to line up with your ribs. So what you're going to do is you're going to take this block, you're going to slide, um, slide your blade in place on it out to the desired diameter. And I'm going to go, well, maybe. Now that, it's, now that I'm on video, I guess I can't do it. Um, here we go, maybe. So I've got a couple pins in place already to, to kind of hold us in shape. And so what I do, before I do anything else, is I actually pin my tip of my spar in place so that it can't wander around. The next place that I ensure is correctly located is the leading edge of my outline right next to that spar out at the tip. Uh, next thing I want to do is I want to put a couple of pins in here to locate the propeller spar in place. And then I can start pinning the outline very, very loosely, but enough. That pin was in the wrong spot. Here we go. using those marks I put on my ribs, I can actually start to make this outline go in place and provide proper alignment. And usually, the two most critical points for establishing the helical twist are that tip station and this one right here between the first and second rib bays. Or between, yeah, in the second bay. There we go. Um, now what I've done, because I've now got this twist established, I have basically, by doing that, I compress the blade towards the tip. Uh, that's how that twist is formed, because it is, we're no longer in a straight line, so our distance betw distances between our rib bays is shortened, and that forces that twist to stay. So that's why you want to establish that twist before you have glued anything down. Now I'm actually going to come in here 
or I'm going to attempt to come in here and we're going to pin this station or the outline I should say. Notice I have not joined my out have not closed up my outline yet. Um, and that's actually the last step you do. Otherwise your your tension will get off and your your twist will change when you remove the, the blade from the block. And I could pin those two in place, but I'm not going to at the moment. Um, at this point, you could go ahead and glue things in, and then um, so you put a dab at each one of those stations, um, shim out your spar as needed to to get it to uh, go where you want it to. Um, but I'm not going to do that yet because I'm going to show a technique here. Um, the only person I know of who does this is Nick Aikman. I'm sure others do. Uh, but I've been experimenting with it, trying to get a little more efficiency. And that is to actually in, uh, let the uh, spar into the ribs. So this is a, a challenging method, but I, I've found it does work fairly well. Uh, one at a time, you're going to come into your ribs and on either side of the spar with a very sharp pair of scissors. I'm going to clip that rib and then I'm going to clip it on the other side of the spar there. And then I'm going to um, basically visually align these uh, rib halves and glue them in. And I do have to put a little bit of a, a shim actually under the spar right here so I can keep the curvature. And you'll so you'll cut one rib, glue it, each half of it, and then you'll go on to the next one. You never cut more than one at a time. Um, otherwise, things fall out of alignment. Uh, you can mark your spar for the proper rib locations after you've got this set up. You could then mark it so you make sure you get them back to the right location. But I find visually you can get them pretty close. And again, you work your way in. And then you set your uh, curvature here at the, uh, at the blade root and, and glue both roots of the uh, outline. And then at that point, it's done. It'll hold its shape. Um, get it wet, whatever, really will not change. It's going to hold that twist. Um, so at the end, you, you get something that looks like this. And you can see it's got a very, very strong twist to it. Um, I actually did wash out the tip a little bit with a wedge on this one. Um, and some people use boron to join ribs across spars like this, but I, I find these this uh, join is, is pretty strong. I used CA again. It adds uh, several milligrams per joint, but uh, these blades will still end up coming out to a finished prop, uh, fixed pitch prop that weighs less than 200 milligrams covered. And uh, I find that's gracious plenty for my purposes.